Hi friends, Laura Snow here with the Red Cliffs Desert Reserve. Um, today we are in my office. I, I swear I don't work in a small tent. Um, we're in a small tent in my office. Usually during the summer months, I like to do a story time and craft here at our visitor center. With everything that's been going on in the world, I've decided to do an online story time and craft this year. So today we are going to be reading Rattlesnake Rules and our craft today is going to be some beaded snakes. So come along. Rattlesnake Rules by Conrad J. Storad, illustrated by Nathaniel P. Jensen. In deserts and in jungles, in lakes and in the sea, live creatures of all shapes and sizes that have rules like you and me. Animals learn rules by living. They have no books or schools. Please pay attention to this story, for even rattlesnakes have rules. Mama Rattler called to her young, gather close, hear what I say. These lessons are important. There are rules you must obey. Mama told her babies lots of tales. She shared tips to keep in mind. Some were scary, some were fun. They learned all about their kind. I can't decide if this guy, if he has a football or if it's a prickly pear fruit. What do you guys think? Rattlesnakes are beautiful, she said. We have bodies long and lean. Our heads look like the ace of spades. We have eyesight that is keen. Some rattlesnakes have tiger stripes. Some have diamonds on their backs. But we all have fangs and venom. And we all eat mice for snacks. Look at this guy can draw with his tail. Kind of sad, I don't have a tail. I would definitely try to draw with it. Mama taught them rules for hunting. She showed them how to play. She taught her babies rules for eating to help them survive each day. Rattlers hunt both night and day, she said. Cool days, warm nights are the best. But when the weather gets really cold, we coil in our dens to rest. So does your mom put you to bed each night and she snuggles you up? So this is the mom rattlesnake and you can see that she's putting all of her little babies to bed and she's got their fire so that they're staying warm. Rules for hunting. Flick your forked tongue in and out. Do you guys know why snakes stick their tongue out? They're actually tasting the air. So they're gathering all of the scents in the air on their tongue and they use it to smell so that they can see, get a better idea of what's going on around them. Rule number two, try not to make a sound. Your tongue will pick up lots of smells, both from the air and from the ground. Use your pits to locate food. They can sense a rodent's heat. Keep flicking until you see the prey. Then it's almost time to eat. Coil tight before you strike, she said. Let the prey come near. Wham! Strike fast with your fangs. Your dinner time is here. Look, they're practicing. They have little mice on the old cans and they're practicing how to strike. Rules for eating. Rule number one, open mouth very wide. It's something snakes can 
do. Rule number two, swallow prey in one big gulp. Rattlers have no teeth with which to chew. Mama saved the warning rules for last. The babies pressed close to hear. She told them when to rattle hard. She told them things to fear. As Mama shared her wisdom, one of her babies began to wail. My rattle scares me, Mama. I'm afraid of my own tail. Oh, look, her mean brothers are laughing at her. Don't laugh at your siblings. <laughs> Mama smiled, then continued. Please listen close, my dear. Your rattle makes important sounds. It makes your message clear. Some creatures don't like snakes, she said. Some have four legs and some have two. You must warn them for protection. It helps them and it may save you. So there's the guy there and he's taking his little dog for a walk. And so if they came close, then the rattlesnakes would rattle and the guy and his dog would know to get away fast. Rules of warning. Rule number one, rattle loud when danger is near. Shake your rattle without fail. Rule number two, rattle even louder. Don't be scared of your own tail. Mama Rattler's rules for us are simple. Just common sense, that's true. Remember, leave rattlesnakes alone and they'll never bother you. It's true, you just gotta leave them alone and walk away and give them some space and don't bother them. Rules for humans. Rule number one, step back when a snake's tail rattles. This is not a time for fun. Rule number two, step back again, slowly. A smart move is to run. I've got some rattlesnake fast facts here. There are more than 30 species of rattlesnakes. Some rattlesnakes can get to be seven feet long. They eat rats and mice and other small rodents, squirrels, bunnies, small birds, frogs, toads, lizards, centipedes, lots of things. But there are also animals that eat them, like king snakes and coyotes and foxes and bobcats. Um, let's see, a couple more. Oh, I like this one. A rattlesnake's rattle is made of keratin, and that is the same stuff that your fingernails are made out of, and also the same stuff that the outside of a tortoise's shell is made out of. All right, today we are making beaded snakes, and I've got everything that we're going to need, and I'll walk you guys through what to do. So we start with a regular pipe cleaner. Um, we have two googly eyes, one puffball for a head, and about 50 beads. The beads that we are using today are these perler beads or melty beads. Um, I got this big bucket at Michael's. Um, they can be used for a lot of different crafts. They're the ones that you can iron and they stick together, but today we're gonna be threading them onto our pipe cleaner. Um, the other thing that you need is some red felt. You can see that my beaded snake has his little forked tongue so that he can sniff and taste the air. So that's the first thing that we will do is cut a little tiny strip of red felt. And it doesn't have to be any particular length. So you have your little strip and then make it a forked tongue. 
just like that. So then you've got your little sneak tongue. And um, after much trial and error, we learned that hot glue is going to be the way to go um, to attach your snake's tongue and his body to its head. So just a dab of the hot glue. The hot glue that I use um, doesn't get super hot, so it's good for kids. Um, I can't be trusted with hot, hot glue. Burnt the heck out of myself making a mummy costume once. So I've liked the cool hot glue ever since. Um, so I just glued the snake's tongue to the little puff ball. And then we will glue the pipe cleaner and the tongue together. All right, so just another dab of glue and then you put the body on there and I kind of squish it down. If you're using super hot, hot glue, don't burn yourself. Squish. And then we'll take our two googly eyes and do a dab of glue on each. So we got one googly eye, second googly eye. All right, so we'll let that set for a minute. With the first snake that I made, you can see that I chose to do a pattern. Um, this pattern is to look like our Sonoran Mountain King Snake, Sierra, who lives here at our visitor center. Um, I just threaded them on their yellow, orange, yellow, black all the way down, but you don't have to do a pattern. I think with this one, um, I'm just going to do some random colors to see what I end up with. So I've got a few beads on and I am definitely not doing any kind of pattern. Um, for parrots, these um, beaded snakes help work on manual dexterity. They help work on um, identifying patterns. And so they're a fun craft for kids. I feel like these beaded snakes were really my most popular craft that um, we did last summer. They were a big hit. They're super easy. And just gonna finish getting all of these beads on. So as you get toward your last couple beads, you'll just take that little remaining piece of pipe cleaner and I like to kind of scoot a bead up and then just sort of roll it over. <laughs> so just fold it over like that and then your beads will stay on. And the nice thing about doing this on a pipe cleaner is you can leave your snake straight or you can coil it so it's ready to strike. Um, and you can see I've got a couple different examples. So my pattern snake and my random snake and a couple different um, sizes of puff balls as well. But I just really think that this is a fun craft, um, a good way to stay inside and stay cool. And that Thank you guys so much for joining me today. We will be doing these story time and craft once a week, probably on Fridays, like we do it when we are able to meet in real life. Um, as usual, if you enjoyed my video today, please like and share. And if you are on our YouTube channel, please subscribe so that you'll know when we do release a new video. Thank you so much. Bye.